Gigabit internet, a thousand megabits per second. Sounds great, right? And there's lots of marketing claims by every internet service provider that offers it. Everything from lag-free gaming to streaming videos with no buffering. And they all talk about how many things you can download really fast. One video game in one minute, a hundred albums in 44 seconds, 121 episodes in an hour. And then Comcast, I mean, they don't even try to hide it. They're just like, Perfect for today's ultra-connected smart household and the ultimate Wi-Fi experience. Whatever that means, there's not even any specifics in there. And then even for the 400, they just say heavy usage activities, great for multiplayer gaming. And obviously this stuff is so vague and I'm here to tell you, first of all, all of that is just marketing BS. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some good reasons to have gigabit for some people that we're definitely going to talk about, obviously. And there's also reasons why everything mentioned in all those marketing ads are not good reasons at all. And you definitely do not need gigabit for them, which is why a lot of those are not specific in the slightest. They're very vague reasons for having it. Faster downloads, whatever. And when you actually dig in and take a look at what you actually can use these speeds for, it kind of makes sense why they're so vague and why it's absolutely unnecessary to have gigabit for the reasons that they're giving. So talking about streaming. So streaming on Netflix, the highest amount of stream you'd use is for 4K video Ultra HD on Netflix, which is 25 megabits per second. That's it. Not a thousand, obviously. And then even if you have the maximum number of people connected on a Netflix account, which is four, that's four times 25. That's still only gonna be an absolute maximum of 100 megabits per second. You don't need anywhere near a gigabit to stream without buffering. And on YouTube, it's kind of the same story. They recommend for 4K streaming, it's 20 megabit connection. 1080p, it's only five megabit. And I did check myself for 8K, and that was only using a maximum of like 45 megabits per second. And who even watches an 8K? I don't know anyone who even has an 8K display to watch it on. The other claims having to do with gaming are also complete nonsense because being lag free and having a low latency in a game rarely has anything to do with bandwidth at all. And latency typically just has to do with the distance between connections, so how far you are away from the nearest game server, and also the quality of the ISP's internet backbone, not your internet connection to your house specifically. And when it does come to using actual bandwidth for a video game, Games need almost nothing. I mean, for example, Counter-Strike Global Offensive uses less than one megabit per second, and that's pretty typical. If you look at any game requirements, like on Steam, almost all of them just say broadband internet connection required. And by that, they pretty much mean anything except dial-up. You need almost no information for using a multiplayer game because all it's doing is sending packets of information of like locations of players it's not like it's streaming a whole game to you so you might be thinking wait a minute if all the reasons that internet companies are giving for getting gigabit are just bs nonsense then what is gigabit even good for and i would say that this day and age in the most recent years and probably for several years in the future gigabit internet is good for pretty much one thing and one thing only, and that is downloading or uploading big ass files all at once. So for example, here are some actual uses where you might be dealing with huge files. So first of all, might be downloading a video game. Video games these days are like over 50 gigabytes sometimes, and the updates are often like 10 gigabytes plus. If you're downloading files that big, it might help to have a very fast internet connection as fast as possible. Now, do you need gigabit? Not necessarily, but if you're getting ready to play your new game and you have to wait an hour for it to play, that really does suck. So if you have to wait maybe only 10 minutes, that's a lot better. And the same goes for updates. If you launch Origin, you wanna play Battlefield 5 with your friends and you realize you're the only one who hasn't updated it yet, yeah, that 10 gigabyte update is gonna really suck while all your friends are already playing. So you wanna get it done as quick as possible, obviously. Next, another good use might be if you're uploading to a backup service. You're backing up your entire computer which might be a lot of files 
in that case, yeah, that's gonna be a ton of data that you're gonna be uploading all at once and you probably want it to be done quicker than later. Especially considering if you are dealing with huge files and you are saturating your connection and maxing it out, that does mean that for that whole time, then any other things you do wanna do like streaming and stuff, are gonna be very affected. So that's another good use of having gigabit is if you are maxing out your connection, hopefully because it's faster, that connection will be maxed out not as long. One use in a professional setting might be if you're like a video editor and you have to download massive raw files from clients, you know, they're filming on a Red Epic or whatever and they have a 100 gigabyte file they want you to download and edit. Yeah, that could be a serious issue if you wanna get your workday started and you have to spend half of it just downloading a file and then have to upload it back up again when it's done. Yeah, that could be an issue. That's a real reason why you might wanna have gigabit. And then another common reason for some of you might be if you're downloading giant files like Blu-ray rips off of BitTorrent. Now, this is only theoretical, of course, because that's not technically legal, but I'm sure there are some of you out there who might be wondering about that. Yeah, if you're downloading something that massive, of course, the faster, the better. But all of that being said, there's a major, major caveat, which is that those use cases for having gigabit are assuming that the services you're uploading to or downloading from are actually allowing you to saturate and max out your connection when you're using it. For the most part, when you're just browsing the web, going on a website or downloading small files from a website, Typically, those are gonna be bandwidth capped. They're not gonna let you download it a gigabit because they know that there's a lot of people that are gonna be using the site. The files aren't that big, so they don't want one person using up all the bandwidth. So it's not gonna make a difference how fast your internet connection is above like maybe 10 megabits per second if you're browsing the web. Websites are not gonna load any faster. And for the most part, there's only gonna be a handful of services that actually do allow you to download it the full gigabit. And a lot of these are gaming services where you're gonna be downloading games. It makes sense, they know that these files are huge, they're gonna implement the infrastructure if people are gonna be downloading giant files very often. So for example, Steam, I tested that out, that had me maxing out at about 60 megabytes per second, and that's about 480 megabits per second. So just under half of my max speed, although when I did a speed test, I was not getting the full gigabit, so that probably has something to do with it. You're never gonna get the full internet speed from your service provider. Another example is Blizzard's Battle.net. I've seen it download at like 80 megabytes per second before. I tried downloading on Origin. That was topping out again at 80 megabytes per second. That's 640 megabits. And then I downloaded Fortnite Update. It was like 11 gigabyte update and that was downloading surprisingly only at 30 megabytes per second. So that was not even maxing out my connection. So that's an example of if you even have anything higher than 300 megabits per second, that's not gonna make a difference at all. 30 megabytes, 240 megabits seems to be the max I was getting at that point. Other examples may be if you're downloading to your game console, and this is mostly assuming that all these things are gonna be connection via hardwire. I know that PlayStation Network, Xbox Store, I know PlayStation can download at like 400 megabits per second I've seen it at, but one that really surprised me and is really disappointing is when I went to test out iTunes. You would think that iTunes, where you're downloading movies and TV shows optionally in addition to music, they would allow you to download very fast. But when I went to download a movie, it was only topping out at like three megabytes per second. That's only 25 megabits per second for like a five gigabyte movie. It wanted to take almost an hour to do it. It was nonsense. So don't assume that every service, even something as good as iTunes is gonna allow you to max out that connection. Seems like it doesn't. So we can go back to the ultimate question. Do you need gigabit in 2019? Or do you even need a faster internet connection than the one you currently have? Like I've kind of talked about, I would say in my experience, the biggest use case for the average person is gonna be downloading video games. These are the biggest files that the average person is gonna download. And it's also a good use case because all of the services typically do allow you to actually use the very fast internet connection and saturate it. But even in that case, you have to ask yourself, how often do you really download a new video game? Is it worth it paying an extra maybe $30 a month to your internet company if you only maybe download one 
new video game a month or every two months or whatever. One exception though might be if you have something like Xbox Game Pass, where you pay like a monthly fee and then you have access to their entire library of games and you could download full games, whichever ones you want. So in that case, you might be downloading lots of very big video games very often. So if you have something like that, it might be worth it. But if you're just buying all the games individually, I don't know, is it worth it to save like an hour or two if you're paying every month extra the internet company? And when it comes to pretty much every other case, I would say if someone needs gigabit, they would know it. Anyone who needs gigabit is gonna probably know why because there's a specific reason for it. Because even if you think, oh, well, I download a lot of HD movies and TV shows, I mean, TV shows and HD movies, they're compressed. They're not very big. Typically, it's gonna be like five gigabytes at most for a movie, and if you're downloading a TV show, I mean, you could download the first episode and then watch it while you're downloading the rest. You don't need to download it all at once. And besides video games, it's actually kind of rare to come across a file that's like 10 gigabytes or more that you're trying to download, unless you're actually specifically seeking it out. I would argue that unless you are in that camp of people who actually have a real specific reason where they know they have gigabit or need it, then I would say that the max that any typical person or household would need is around 300 megabits per second. If you're looking for like a super high-end one, you're not really sure, you can probably justify that and if it's not too expensive, of course. And my reasoning behind that is you're gonna have to assume that you're never actually going to get the full speed that you pay for from the internet company when it's like peak hours. Let's say it even drops down to half the speed and then you'll have a 150 megabit connection. And then say you are like a worst case scenario where you have four people in your house and every single one of them is watching an ultra high definition movie on Netflix, then that'll give you 100 megabits out of the 150 max at that time. Then that's still giving you a pretty good buffer zone. You're probably never gonna use the 300, but it'll give you a good amount of space. But understand that no matter what super fast internet connection speed you get, it's very rare that you're gonna need it. It's pretty much just good for isolated cases where you need to download one thing very fast and not do sustained big streams or anything like that. Streams do not use that much data. Now, will that change in the future, like five plus years? Yeah, I'm sure it will. Perhaps companies like Netflix will start offering optional higher bit streams. So maybe if you do have a very fast internet connection, you can choose to stream a UHD movie in like 100 megabit, or maybe when 8K movies start coming out, that might take 100 megabits or more. And in that case, you probably would need like 300 at least, but that's a long ways out and that's not gonna be anytime soon. So in most basic terms, the too long didn't watch version of this video is do you need gigabit? Almost certainly not. And if you did, you'll know it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And if you want, you can check out some other videos I have right on here. You should enjoy those. And until next time, be seeing you.